Hello, NAPSIG Inspire participants. I am Joni Appel. I am a GIS analyst with the Anne Arundel County Fire Department in Maryland. I also support the County Office of Emergency Management, and I am a member of the Maryland Incident Management Team. I'm going to talk a little bit today about my personal experiences activating on large-scale events as a GIS resource. I was sent to Kansas in 2019 to help with the flooding there. And most recently, I was in Oregon to assist with the Oregon wildfire response. When you activate, you're being sent as a resource. So you'll see something very similar to the resource description that I have clipped from my most recent activation. There'll be a very broad general idea of what you will be asked to do. And in most cases, it's things that you're already doing at your home location as a general GIS analyst. With the Oregon wildfires, safety concerns were a little bigger due to the fact that we were in the middle of a global pandemic. So to give you an idea of what type of lead time you get when you're being asked to deploy to an event. The Oregon wildfires were a really great example. So the fire started on September 7th. By September 15th, there was a presidential disaster declaration. That enabled the state of Oregon to go to all the other states and ask for assistance. So that day, September 15th, I got a very long-winded email from the Director of Emergency Management, and all she asked was, want to go? I said yes, and that just starts a huge flurry of putting together paperwork and bids and a lot of phone calls, trying to figure out, is this something that we can even do to get me out there so quickly? So the next day, the state of Oregon accepted that bid. That's when I got the go ahead to start making all my travel arrangements. And less than 24 hours later, I was on a plane flying to Oregon and September 18th, I was at my location working with the local staff. With these really tight timelines, you have just this rush and flurry of activity before you deploy. For me, working for the fire department, I have to go through my chain of command, which also involves the Office of Emergency Management, to coordinate on, do they really want to send me to this, to this event? Then you're putting together your proposal. So you're researching how much is it going to cost to fly, rent a car, find hotels. Sometimes there's constraints on how much you can spend for your hotel. In some cases, there's a lot of competition for lodging, especially in the case of Oregon, where FEMA was there and Red Cross were putting people up in hotels. So it was very hard to find a place to stay that met those per diem requirements. You have to give them wage information. That's a big question for a lot of GIS people because oftentimes we are classed as professionals with a salary. So do you get overtime? You have to take that into account when you're putting together that proposal. Plus you have a lot of other kind of miscellaneous costs of parking and travel to the airport from your home location. You know, and as you're trying to get all this together to get the bid together from, from you to go to the state, you're also preparing to leave your own job for 16 days. A typical deployment is 14 days at that site plus a day on each end for travel. So you're trying to leave your job for over two weeks, but you're also preparing to leave your house for over two weeks. In, in my case, it's a visit to the frozen food section of the grocery store. So my husband has something to eat while I'm gone and uh, a tearful goodbye with my dog. Then you're off to the races, booking reservations. A lot of times you want to do these over the phone. Uh, hotels don't always advertise availability, especially if you're going in during a, an event and you need a government rate. 
the best thing you can do is pick up the phone. In Oregon, all the hotels were booked. I was able to talk to someone at one of the local hotels and get some really nice tips on other places I could call and I eventually found lodging. You're doing a lot of coordination with your home agency. There's a whole bunch of paperwork that has to happen and it has to happen at all different levels. You're working with your chain of command, plus I'm working with our Office of Emergency Management and you're also working with the State Office of Emergency Management. You also have to ensure that you're ready to go once you get there. Do you have all the administration rights you need to have on your computer if you're bringing your own computer? Do you have licensing for your software? In a lot of cases, organizations will show up and depend on using a VPN to access all their licensing. Some places, the internet infrastructure just isn't robust enough to handle 100 people trying to VPN in to have access to their licensing. So that's something you really have to keep in mind when you're preparing to go. Some activations, they want you to bring your own computer. Other activations, they'll provide everything that you need once you get there. So what do you do all day? It really depends. You know, the main thing you are there for is to support the local staff. Chances are they've been at it for a week or two or three and they're exhausted. They really just need somebody to show up, roll up their sleeves and say, what can I do to help? You're gonna spend a lot of time working with other agencies if Red Cross needs help with data or you need to interface with the National Guard or FEMA, that's what you'll do. Sometimes you'll be working in a team of three or four GIS analysts working at a time. Sometimes you'll be just yourself or two of you. It all depends on what type of schedule that they run during the activation. When I was in Oregon, it was kind of just a 12 hour day. Everyone in the GIS department went home around five or six or seven. When I was in Kansas, we ran 24 hours a day. So we had a night shift and a day shift with two GIS analysts on each shift. You'll do a lot of dashboards. These are becoming extremely popular, especially for internal data sharing you'll find yourself managing a lot of different versions. You'll have versions that different ESFs are accessing and versions that all the command staff are accessing. And then you'll also probably be putting out public facing dashboards, especially in the era of COVID, they've become so popular and so natural for people to see and seek out. You could be doing custom survey one, two, three apps. They become extremely popular and very helpful. Uh, we deployed one at 4 a.m. to the National Guard in Kansas to help them with levy surveys to see if there was a potential breach occurring. The sky's really the limit. Sometimes you'll even be asked to print paper maps. So, you know, is this something you might be interested in doing? It's hectic. It's last minute, just the nature of emergencies. You're not gonna have a heads up of more than a day or two. The first time I activated to Kansas, my husband had broken his elbow three days before that. And it was really hard to give him 24 hours notice that I was gonna up and disappear for over two weeks. Logistics can be tricky, especially if you're going into an area that's having a widespread emergency. You're trying to find a place to stay. You're trying to fly in. You try to rent a car. Can you actually access that area? You're kind of have a feeling that you're on your own as you're planning a lot of this. Even though you do have a lot of support, you're the one trying to, to get all this together really quickly. You have to ask yourself, do you have a credit card that you can charge for, for your home agency? I don't have one. So that creates a lot of 
logistical issues. You want to have your airfare under your own account because if the activation ends early or they need to send you home or send you somewhere else, you need to be able to make changes to all those plans that you have. You're gonna feel like a fish out of water. You're walking into a cohesive team who've been together for a while and they're exhausted and they're just ready for someone to come help them out. So you need to just jump in, try to absorb as much as you can, as quickly as you can, because you wanna be there to help them as much as possible. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork. Anybody who is on an incident management team or familiar with ICS, it's paperwork. You're keeping track of every penny you spend, all your hours, you're constantly reporting back to your home agency so they know that you're safe. And you're gonna come home to a lot of work. You're gonna have an over two week backlog when you get back to your old desk. And then you have to do all the reimbursement paperwork for your activation. It's like, oh, you make this sound so wonderful. So why should you sign up for it? You're gonna learn so much in two weeks. It's amazing. It is an accelerated course in emergency management, ICS, ARC Pro, how to make dashboards, how to bring tons of different data sources together in a cohesive way. And as you're learning from all these other people you get to work with, you're also sharing skills and tips and ideas with people who have never tried different things. And you get to bring all this stuff home to your own agency. You broaden your ideas on the best way to do things. For me, I'm with a county agency. Oftentimes I am finding myself surrounded by state level people. That's a completely different way of looking at things than from a small local agency. And that has definitely changed some of the ways I work when I get back home to my job. You do get to go to a different part of the country, but you're also generally in a basement EOC or you're inside the whole time. You're there to give relief to the existing staff. You're not generally going to have a day off. You're not going to have a lot of time to go sightsee and experience new things. You can carve out a little bit of time for yourself, depending on what the schedule's like. I had a half day where I got to go look at the Pacific Ocean, and that was really cool. Uh, but you're going you're gonna to experience a lot of new people, a lot of new ideas. And, you know, ultimately, everyone's at this conference because we just like to help people. We're natural helpers. And... This is kind of the penultimate experience where you get to drop everything and go and help. One morning I came to my desk at the EOC in Oregon and this card was sitting on my desk waiting for me. And it was from the daughter of the local GIS staff saying, you know, thank you for coming here so their dad could come home and spend time with them. And you're tired and maybe you've had a slow day there and you're thinking, why am I even here? I'm not, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z that I thought I'd be doing. You're there as support to that local agency. And that's the most important thing that you have to remember is it doesn't matter if you get to do all these cool, wild, neat things. You're there to give people a break that needs a break and you're there to help. And that is, I think, one of the most rewarding things about activating as a GIS analyst. So I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what it's like. It's hectic, it's interesting, it's fun, it's stressful, and it's extremely educational. And I think if you have the chance to do it, if you have that relationship with your 
emergency management manager, let them know that you would be interested in doing something like this. So someday you'll get that email at you know, five o'clock on a holiday with someone saying, hey, you wanna go? And you should definitely say yes. Thank you.